Taylor is no stranger to IPPE. She did her honours under Keon with me as a co-supervisor and um, uh, received the uh, APS award, I believe, for her honours um, thesis for finishing first. Um, so um, we were, were very lucky to convince Ella to come back and do a PhD uh, in the midst of also doing her master's. So uh, excited about this presentation. I'll, I'll hand over to you, Ella, to share your screen and uh, off you go. Well, let me just share my screen. Can you see it? Is that all good? All right. First, I just want to thank um, my supervisors for being amazing driving instructors. Um, they trusted me behind the wheel um, and believed that what I could do. Um, but that was, at the same time, they also had their foot on the pedal to make sure I didn't drive off the road. Um, and a shout out to you, Keon, because I actually wouldn't be here today um, if not for your support um, in my honours. Uh, I just want to thank the panel for their time today. And Mike, um, a thank you to you for always being there and offering advice. Um, and to you, Chris, um, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to work with amazing people and to be able to learn so much. Uh, so on that note, I will present my study. Uh, I am looking at media multitasking and the impact on children's everyday functioning. Now, I'm sure I'm talking about a topic today that a number of parents have encountered, uh, especially with the trials and challenges of homeschooling during COVID because I'm sure it can be a struggle to have children focus on their Zoom classes or classwork without switching screens or trying to engage with other media. So to give you an overview of my presentation today, I will examine the area of research and discuss some of the theories of media multitasking, look at some of the implications and then put forward my proposed studies. I'll examine my PhD timeline and then open for questions. So I want you to imagine a scenario. We have a young girl, let's call her Elsa. Elsa sits in her living room at home as she completes an English comprehension task on her MacBook. The television is blaring in front of her. Unconsciously, she frequently pauses and shifts her attention from the television screen back to her homework task, attempting to read the words in front of her. Her iPhone sits to her left, it pings. It's a YouTube alert notifying her of a new video that's been uploaded. Elsa stops and switches tabs on her notebook and logs into her YouTube account. She begins viewing the new content. While watching the video, her phone pings again. There's a live stream broadcasting on Instagram. Elsa picks up her phone and begins watching. Partway through the live stream, she remembers her homework assignment. She switches tasks again to her homework page and pauses. She doesn't remember what she just read or her position on the page. This is an example of media multitasking and the potential impact it can have on everyday functioning. But what is media multitasking? What does the literature give as a definition? Well, it can be the simultaneous use of multiple digital devices, or it could be a single device with multiple tabs open or applications. Or it could also be a traditional non-digital device or non-digital um, activity while using a digital device. So it could be a student in a lecture listening to their lecturer while engaging with um, an activity on their notebook. So they might be sending emails or checking Instagram or Facebook. 99% of adults engage in two hours or more of media multitasking each day. 60% of adolescents note that they media multitask all the time. But what's scary is the fact that 50% of children start media multitasking between the ages of five and eight. And research suggests that within our society, the mass saturation and accessibility of digital devices, as well as the seamless integration of apps and programs, allow for this constant engagement with multiple media. I guess one only really needs to look at Apple's device connectivity to see why this constant engagement with media multitasking can arise. But then you're probably thinking, why is this a problem? We do know that people engage in excessive screen time. But the problem is not just about time. So if we use two devices and we, we engage for an hour, those two devices, it doesn't add up to two hours of screen time. 
If we use three devices for three hours, it does not mean we're using three hours of screen time. It's a little bit more complex than this, but there are a number of theories that underscore media multitasking that seek to explain the impact. One of those theories is the cognitive load theory. It suggests that there are limitations to an individual's working memory capacity and attentional information processing. The research suggests that as we task switch with multiple media devices, this increases our information consumption. But this also increases our cognitive load or the amount of information contained in our working memory. But what happens is all this information strains our working memory so that we struggle to hold and process this abundance of information in our mind. What results is lost information, reduced performance and increased errors. Another theory that, that underscores media multitasking is the bottleneck theory. It argues that media multitasking or any type of multitasking is a myth. As individuals have a limited cognitive capacity, our focus and attention can only be allocated to one task at a time. As we take in new information while switching between media, media multi or devices, a bottleneck forms to which only a single piece of information can be processed at a time. And we normally, we normally process like the most exciting and most salient information first. Information then builds up, reducing the processing of any secondary or this boring information, which creates interference and reduces deep learning. The scattered attention hypothesis. Now this is a targeted media multitasking theory and it suggests that media multitasking negatively affects cognitive control in the long term. The theory suggests that as individuals have this cognitive processing style that's characterized by this continuous scattered attention towards several sources of information, we can become accustomed to frequently switching and processing information from several sources simultaneously, because we're looking around and trying to gather information from everywhere. This can become habitual, so this behaviour can continue outside of a media multitasking environment and we operate with split attention. What results is that we have trouble filtering out the relevant from irrelevant information because we're always attending to all information all the time. This causes distraction and a weakening of cognitive control in the long term. One area of cognitive control that's impacted by media multitasking is executive functioning. Executive functions are those really important skills that help us control, regulate, and support our day-to-day -day functioning to allow us to plan, attend, and stay focused on tasks to enable us to achieve our goals. When, we, when our executive functions are disrupted, we can easily become distracted, we struggle with mental flexibility, and as noted before, we struggle to filter out irrelevant information. Executive functioning deficits can also disrupt our self-regulatory and self-control behaviours due to deficits in impulse control. And as our working memory and cognitive flexibility is disrupted, this can impact our decision-making processes. So when executive functioning deficits occur, this may lead to issues with learning and academic performance, behavioural issues, so maybe sometimes behaviours akin to ADHD-like um, symptomology, Children may struggle to develop theory of mind or the inability to understand the desires and beliefs of others. Psychosocial outcomes can be impacted, so depression and anxiety, as well as sleep and dietary behaviours. Research findings around media multitasking have produced some varying results, and this is particularly across age groups, as there's some evidence that media multitasking may be more, more harmful for some vulnerable groups. A recent cross-sectional study found that increases in media multitasking activity was associated with deficits in executive functioning skills. However, this was more apparent for children than older adolescents and young adults. This is an important finding as the researchers suggest that this may be due to, due to a child's lack of brain maturation and underdeveloped executive functioning skills. Which brings me to my first study. In this study, I'll be looking to carry out a systematic review meta-analysis, assessing the influence of media multitasking on critical outcomes across the lifespan. So in this study, I propose to examine the existing literature 
to gain a clearer understanding of the relationship between media multitasking and engagement across a range of key individual functioning domains, such as academic and learning outcomes, cognitive and neurocognitive impacts, and psychosocial outcomes, to assess the risks and any potential benefits of media multitasking. But I'm going to use a lifespan approach in an attempt to understand the impact of age on outcomes and um, assess any particular vulnerable groups. So looking at children, adolescents, young adults and adults. Eligibility criteria. So the studies will need to meet one of the three media multitasking definitions I outlined prior. It will investigate one area of individual functioning. The study will examine like children, adolescents, young adults and adults as noted and published in English. My search strategy will include an array of key databases, search strategy complex concepts as noted, and I'll also use a bi-directional citation search, whereby I'll employ a forward and backward citation search as a means of maximizing the inclusion of relevant studies. I'll also be following best practice meta-analysis methods to carry out the review. So from my preliminary review of the literature, I expect to find that there'll be deficits examining children with the current research focused on adolescents and young adults. Also, current research may rely on self-report or diary measures to quantify media multitasking levels. I mean, how many of you can actually remember the number of times a day, let alone your children, may engage with multiple devices? Also, this research is generally focused on cross-sectional studies, so there may be a lack of understanding as to the long-term effects of media multitasking. So this brings me to my study two. Study two will form part of the groundbreaking Kid Vision Research Study, examining the long-term um, consequences of media multitasking across key developmental areas, such as academic and learning-related outcomes in children. Academic and learning outcomes and behaviours are key developmental areas for children, whereby understanding the impact of media multitasking is critical. In terms of behaviour, research suggests that media multitasking may serve to increase distraction, inattention and increase impulsivity, which links to symptoms that are akin to ADHD. So, for example, research has shown in adolescents that high compared to low media multitasking use was associated with lower GPAs and reduced test scores. And one study even found that media multitasking during a lecture impeded performance so that additional home study could not compensate for the information lost during the lecture. In terms of behavioural outcomes, a recent longitudinal study that examined media multitasking use in the formative preschool years found that the children developed ADHD-like symptoms by the time they were six years old. So in my study two, I propose to examine the long-term impact of media multitasking, in particular the duration and frequency of media multitasking use on academic and behavioural outcomes. Also, as executive functions have been found to influence academic and behavioural outcomes, and executive functions have, are impacted by media multitasking activity, it may be the case that the relationship between media multitasking and academic and learning behaviours is explained by these deficits in executive functioning. I'll also examine if any of these relationships are reciprocal. So how am I going to carry this out? Well, 400 children will be recruited as part of the major study, aged 7 to 10 at baseline. Media multitasking will be measured using wearable cameras, which I'll get to in the next slide. Inf um, data will be collected at baseline, then at two time points a year apart. Academic information will be measured using NAPLIN results and ADHD-like behaviours will be measured using the Strengths and Difficulties Questionnaire. Executive functioning will be assessed using the Dimensional Change Card Sort Task and the Flanker Inhibitory Control and Attention Test. Now, what's key about this study is that we'll be obtaining objective data Prior research has struggled to accurately measure media multitasking, often relying on media use journals or self-report measures. Research has found self-report measures can underestimate all interactions with multiple digital devices, especially for parents who do not have eyes in the back of their head. Media multitasking engagement can also be habitual and an unconscious action. 
Therefore, this study will utilize wearable cameras as a means of capturing media multitasking engagement to obtain a more accurate account. So why is this research even important? As executive functioning supports key outcomes and is impacted by media multitasking, it's important that we understand the long-term implications for children. Also, assessing reciprocal relationships is critical, as it may be the case that children with executive functioning deficits gravitate towards media multitasking, which can then further impact their executive functioning skills. Also, as children are not born with executive functioning skills, but rather the ability to develop these skills, understanding the influence that may adversely impact development is of critical interest to researchers, parents, and policymakers alike. And this brings me to my third study. While the set study two looked at the long-term impacts, study three will examine the acute or short-term implications of media multitasking on the cognitive and neurocognitive processes in children. Interestingly, in an experimental study carried out by Lowe, the researchers found that when they examined executive functioning using behavioural assessments, high compared to low media multitaskers displayed deficits across working memory and impulse control dimensions of executive functioning. But what was also interesting was that Lowe found that high media multitaskers who displayed these deficits in working memory and inhibitory control also displayed increase in prefrontal cortex activity. The authors suggested that high media multitaskers may require more effort, attention, and executive control to remain focused in the presence of distractors, which increase their prefrontal cortex activity. However, to date, we are unaware of the neurocognitive impact of media multitasking on children. Therefore, in my third study, I propose to examine the acute effects of media multitasking across the three dimensions of executive functioning, so working memory, inhibitory control, and cognitive flexibility using behavioral tasks. But I'll also use neurocognitive imaging to assess functional differences in children's performance. So how am I going to do this? 80 children aged seven to 12 will be recruited and all participants will complete these executive functioning tasks in a media, media monotasking environment to establish a baseline. Then at time point one, all participants will be randomly allocated into the, either the monotasking um, condition or the media multitasking condition to again perform the executive functioning assessments. To measure neurocognitive activity in children, the EFNAS device will be used to measure, cha to measure changes in oxygenated and deoxygenated haemoglobin in the brain. Children will wear the EFNAS caps to assess the neurocognitive activation while carrying out the executive functioning assessments in either the monotasking or the media multitasking condition. So why is this study important? There is limited research surrounding the immediate effects of media multitasking in children, and it's important to understand the difference between a monotasking and a media multitasking impact on executive functioning capabilities. Also, by examining neurocognitive outcomes, it can further enhance and complement our understanding of media multitasking impact on executive functioning. So why is any of this research even important? Well, technology is moving forward and it's a permanent fixture in our everyday lives. Media saturation is inevitable and so is the potential for media multitasking. Children potentially represent a vulnerable group and we need to understand how their engagement with media multitasking may impact their learning, behaviour and cognitive processes. And by understanding the long and short term implications of media multitasking on critical, outcome, critical outcomes, we can develop and implement strategy to maximise technology benefits while minimising risk. And my PhD timeline, well, we sit here in August. I'm hoping to have my systematic review or have my systematic review meta-analysis completed by this time next year. Uh, unfortunately, COVID is impacting us at the moment, but looking at having data collection for second study towards the end of this year, and of course, at the other two time points, uh, and study three, I'll start looking at um, towards the mid end of next year. And then there's the aim of completing at um, January 2024. Seems so far away. 
Okay, now open for questions.